And we're back. It's good to see you all, and we're kicking off pretty quick this year. Today, I've got two new updates to share with you, namely consistent character referencing in Hilu slash Minimax, and a pretty interesting new feature in Runways Gen 3. Clock's ticking, let's dive in. Kicking off, we have a new model from Hilu Minimax. Uh, this is the SV01 model. It's basically subject to video. You can think of it as one-shot photo referencing for characters, which on the one hand is great because it requires far less like training time and data than previous methods. But on the other hand, it is super quirky. I've done a lot of tests. I'll show you what I mean. Now, as a note, I believe this is in beta, but it should be dropping fairly soon. Uh, to get to subject referencing, you simply move over to the subject reference tab. So kicking off with me, I'm just gonna drop my standard profile picture in here and then uh, text prompt down here. So although we're providing a reference of our subject, we are still as likely to see all of the weirdness associated with not only AI video, but more importantly, text to video, which is kind of its own brand of surrealness. So kicking off with a shot of me in, uh, I don't know, maybe the show Yellowstone. I don't know. I've never actually seen Yellowstone. I just presume this is what I'd look like if I were in it. That said, I have seen Waterworld, so I decided to give Minimax a Waterworld-inspired prompt and came out with this. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess it's pretty good. Uh, it does look like me, although I do have to say I look a little too happy to be living in, you know, a, an apocalyptic Waterworld. Now, as a quick note, AI me is like super happy in all of these videos. Well, in particular, this one, because he's just jumping up and down, splashing in puddles. I mean, who wouldn't be? But that's a far cry from grumpy AI me, which we saw a lot of in the trained Lauras like late last year. I'll get to my suspicions as to why this is in a minute, but for now, let's move on to some AI generated characters. Now, where I think that subject to video does pretty well is when you provide it with you know more or less a headshot. So I generated up this character in mid journey and then provided it a prompt with my uh, Minimax prompt generator GPT. It's linked down below if you feel like trying it out. You know, it's totally free. Uh, so I just uploaded the image to the GPT and just said, uh, give me a fantasy prompt of this ranger in a forest looking at a castle. Uh, and then, you know, the GPT went to work. It also provides uh, the prompt in uh, Chinese as well. So if you ever need additional characters in your prompt, you can just, you know, prompt it in Chinese because less characters. So this is what we got out of that prompt, which in my opinion is pretty good. I mean, granted, we did ask for her to be looking at the castle, but again, text to video. But overall, I think it does definitely maintain her character and gives us all of the elements that we asked for. Now, as always, and just to showcase that we are not cherry picking here, um, yeah, this was a subsequent role and more or less she is still the same character, although, you know, her armor has now changed. The hood is up a little higher. Uh, this one was a basically ended up being a throwaway anyhow because we had some decoherence in her fingers there. Sliding over to a male character, uh, I ended up using this guy who was one of the characters in a short film that I recently did called The Interview. Your CV here, uh, it's quite colorful. My skills are transferable. Yeah, okay, but it does kind of read like you might be a professional assassin. I prefer the term troubleshooter. I get that. That's really funny. So I decided to use his character model to see what we could get out of subject to video. And indeed, we ended up with a pretty decent shot of him like setting up his sniper rifle and giving us hard looks. He then goes out for a walk down the rainy streets, likely thinking to himself, you know, in another life, I could have been a veterinarian before returning to the apartment to finish setting up his sniper rifle. Uh, and I don't know about you, man, but I don't know if I trust this guy considering how shaky his fingers are there. But I do have to say that Hitman guy definitely comes out very consistent across all generations. I mean, the action and the output might be a little on the wonky side, but in general, as a character, he is always pretty rock solid. It doesn't seem to have a problem with famous faces, as we can see here with this like Shaft meets uh, Bruce Lee, 70s black exploitation meets Kung Fu film that I am now dying to see. Although again, still text to video. So when you try to have Bruce do something with nunchucks, like it comes out a bit of a warpy, uh, decoherent mess. Moving on to some tests with animated characters. Uh, I took this image. It's a bad comp that we put together. I think this was in the video that I did on Kyber's new Super Studio. The idea with this character was to put the punk back in cyberpunk. So using her as a character reference, we ended up with this, which is actually pretty interesting. It's obviously not stylistically in tune with our reference image, but it is the same character, albeit in sort of a different aesthetic style. Definitely looks a little more on like the rotoscope side. Uh, yeah, the drone back there is a bit of a mess, but yeah, overall, I think this is actually pretty fascinating. 
but I do think it is an interesting look and something that you know we don't see a lot of. So maybe one of you can figure out a good narrative use case for it. Now, in terms of, and I hesitate to call this a limitation, more like, you know, where the model stands today is that one thing I definitely have noticed is that it definitely reads whatever expression your input character has and applies that pretty much across the board. Uh, for example, uh, Alex G New Media provided this image. Uh, we can see, you know, sort of a furrowed brow there, uh, a little bit of a slightly open mouth, and then uh, given a text prompt of this, like, I guess, space commander walking onto the bridge of a spaceship, he definitely does have like this kind of worried expression on his face, possibly because everybody else is wearing helmets and he is not. I lost my helmet again. I'm going to be in so much trouble. Alex also ran a pretty interesting experiment running, you know, essentially a character reference sheet as your subject input. And, you know, when you text prompt that way, the idea, of course, being that you might end up with more of a coherent character given, you know, more data. While I'm not 100% sure that that is the case, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. So uh, if you're interested in doing so, a very easy way of doing it, you can utilize mid journey, a prompt like a studio photograph, full body close up shot, character reference photos, a red haired female assassin, or whoever you want to prompt for. Uh, and then just simply start panning up, down, left, and right. It's not necessarily going to be 100%. It's going to take you a number of re rolls before you get there. But, you know, as you move along, you'll eventually end up with. Uh, you know, a pretty good set of character images. I do tend to find that this method works a little bit better than C refing. Uh, I have heard that character referencing in Midjourney is supposed to get a lot better in version seven, so fingers crossed there. And taking that character sheet back over to Hilu uh, and prompting, we end up with like this as a result or this as a result, both of which look pretty good. Now, the reason that I am hesitant to say that the character sheet method works is that uh, if you notice down here, we have sort of this character reference thumbnail down here and when you blow it up, I mean, that's that's what it looks like. So I can't really say if that's the only image that the model is referencing, like as in it's just going through and picking out that one particular face out of that giant model sheet for the character. One trick that I did stumble across, which will lead us into the really stupid trick that I have for you in High Lou Minimax, is um, you could do really bad comps as well. So in this, I just took uh, a character ref of like, I, don't know, I guess he's like the head of the Robert Pattinson fan club uh, and very badly Photoshop comped him into this mid-journey generated background image. Uh, you can actually see how badly because his hair is cut off right there at the top. Uh, anyhow, just running that in uh, Minimax as a subject reference gives us this, which I will say it's not referencing the location uh, image at all, but it is giving us our character. Um, I actually fixed the top of his hair too. Um, but, you know, tonally it has, I guess, more or less the same vibe as our comped version. James D. Phillips also ran across this uh, with sort of this like creator inspired shot. So this is just the character um, running with a text prompt into Minimax. But then by comping the character into a mid-journey generated image, we end up with this, which definitely has, uh, you know, a much cooler aesthetic uh, color grade, you know, the whole night. It just, it looks more cinematic, um, you know, so definitely something to play around with. Running out with kind of a, I guess, a stupid Minimax trick that I was kind of surprised worked. Um, yeah, so taking our location that we saw earlier with our, you know, Robert Pattinson fan club convention happening, uh, and then this uh, character character just generated up in mid-journey. I did knock the background out um, and then just pasted the two of them together as a 16.9 image in Photoshop. And then, yeah, if I give it the prompt, woman walks down the hallway. And indeed, when we run it, I, I guess I'm sort of surprised at how well it works, considering that like the lighting on her actually changes as she comes around the corner. And actually, as she walks around the white, it actually treats the white as a light source. Um, so. Again, I don't know if that's helpful to anyone, but yeah, it's an easy way of getting like two characters into one location. This is a really bad example considering that, you know, they aren't color graded to match the background scene, but um, yeah, just by pasting two characters in there, th they work. So again, kind of a stupid trick, but you know, it does work. Uh, maybe it'll open up some ideas for you. I love this guy is just like, oh, she's such a Bella. Sliding over to the runway side of things, we now have middle frame. If memory serves correctly, it was Luma Labs that introduced uh, first frame, last frame in Dream Machine. Well, uh, runway has, uh, I don't know, one up them, I guess, uh, like literally, or one middled them uh, with middle frame. Essentially, we are very much moving into tweening keyframing here. Runways, Timmy actually showed that off by inputting these three images to get that animation. Here's another one that Timmy managed to pull together utilizing three images once again. 
Now, I'll admit I haven't seen a ton of examples coming out for this, mostly because I think people are still trying to figure out like what the best use case is for it. And of course, you could use it as like essentially for camera moves, uh, as I did here with uh, three Viking shots um, that are just all zooming in and zooming out in mid journey. Uh, then if we run that with a prompt of handheld tracking shot uh, following a group of Vikings marching forward, and we end up, of course, with this kind of like rack zoom in uh, to a rack zoom out for the third keyframe. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of works, but I do think it could be used as kind of a cool title sequence thing. I've been watching a lot of like espionage and crime TV shows. So generating up some images that look like this uh, and then bringing them into Gen 3 Alpha. Uh, and then alongside the three keyframes using the portal transition um, preset, we end up with something that looks like this. <laughs> Now, is that the best opening title sequence to a show that is not on Apple TV? I, I mean, no, but again, I put that together in like 15 minutes. I do think that three keyframes is eventually going to become a fairly powerful tool, but until we have a lot more control in terms of character poses and whatnot, I don't necessarily think narratively it is going to be such, but hopefully we will be seeing a lot more of that this year. In the meantime, we are still waiting for Runway to drop frames, which is their image model. Uh, I'll be sure to be all over that as soon as it does. In the meantime, I just wanna say it is great to be back. I have missed all of you. Really looking forward to spending 2025 with you. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.